This is section 2.1, the tangent and velocity problems, content objective 3, which is to estimate tangent slopes when you're given a table of data. When we're done, I'd like you to be able to explain what's done differently when you have data as opposed to an explicit function. Prior to working through this objective, I want to remind you about our old concept of slope, which you learned in previous objectives and in previous courses. Slope in layman's terms was defined as rise over run, which was the change in y's divided by the change in x's, and to compute it, we've always had to use two points. Now this formula that we have here for computing slope works beautifully when we have an explicit function, because if we want to estimate the tangent slope at a, we simply use the point a comma f of a, and then we choose another point b f of b that is very, very close to a. And we can do this when we have a function, because I can plug whatever I want into the function, provided it is in the domain. However, with this content objective, we do not get the function. That means we are limited by the constraints of the data alone. Here, if we look at example one, it says we want to use the table to estimate the tangent slope at one. So if this were an earlier objective, we would use one and the 16 that goes with it, and then we would select a point either on the left or the right that is super, super close to one, plug it into the function, and then compute the slope. Well, we can't do that here because all we have is the data. So zero is not that close to one, nor is two. So we can't get close like we want. That means we're going to have to estimate using the data. The question becomes, which data do I use? Well, if I plot all of the points that are given to me and then connect them in a smooth curve, we can see that we get the point negative 1, negative 16, 0, 9, 1, 16, etc., etc., and we can kind of eyeball what we think that tangent slope at the point 1, 16 would look like. However, we can't compute that, and we don't know for sure that it's not doing something funky in between those points. So we're going to be trying to estimate this proposed slope by using points that are actually given to us. Generally, we want to restrict our options to the point that we're interested in and the two flanking points, the one immediately to the left and the one immediately to the right. Traditionally, when you look at problems of this nature, the AP people will either use these two points or they'll use these two points or they'll use the flanking points. I would recommend in any scenario involving data and a requirement that you estimate a tangent slope, that you use the flanking points. And here's why. If we look at the given point, 116, and we choose the one to the left, then when we compute the slope, we're finding the slope of this segment. Notice that that is drastically different from our proposed slope just looking at the graph itself. Similarly, if we use the point 116 and the point immediately to the right, we again have something that is not even remotely close. Now granted, the flanking points don't generate something that is perfect, but it is much closer than either of the other two. So general rule of thumb, when you have data, you're going to compute an estimate for the tangent slope for any given point by looking at the flanking data points. For example, if we wanted to find the tangent slope at 3, we would use the point 2, 11 and 4, negative 11, because those are the two that flank 3. If we wanted to estimate the slope at 4, we would use the point 3, 0 and 5, negative 16. We want to get as close as we can to the given point from both sides. If you're feeling ambitious, you can try the notes web exam problem now or you can go on to the language objective and simply explain what is done differently to estimate a tangent slope when you have data as opposed to an explicit function.